Well, I thought they'd have to try hard to be more dovish. They were more dovish. Yeah. They succeeded. You know, the fact I, I would focus less on the dots and the zero hikes this year to the balance sheet. The fact that we're going to start tapering the balance sheet in May and try to finish that up by September means they're going to get this thing done. Um, and then they're going to be, it looks like, reinvesting into treasuries, finishing the MBS, holding more into the treasury market. Um, so I, I would say they, they got the message loud and clear in December that the balance sheet tightening, quantitative tightening, was whether psychologically or actually having a real effect on the markets and the economy, and they want to get that done. Uh, I think the, the, the really, one thing they've done really well here is they've tried to diminish uncertainty. You know, unlike mm -hmm. what we're seeing you know, on the political side of Washington, they really get the uncertainty tax on the, on the U.S. and global economy. So as soon as they had you know, thrown the cat among the pigeons and talk about they're going to get rid of this, this, this balance sheet reduction uh, or they're going, to, they're, they're going to get rid of it, they decided we've got to now put out what the plan exactly is so nobody's going to speculate on it. So I really approve of the fact they've got a plan in place. Okay, now we all know exactly what they're planning to do. That's just one piece of market uncertainty removed, and that, that's obviously a positive thing. I, I think the big positive surprise is they have their one more hike out in... 2020, not this year. Mm -hmm. So they went max uh, dovish on that front. So therefore, the market should respond positively to that. And I certainly agree with David that there was an imperative for them to clean up this issue about where the balance sheet is. It had been hanging out there, and they needed to clean it up. And one of the things I anticipate Chair Powell would bring, bring forth in uh, the press conference is that balance sheet policy and interest rate policy are divorced. They, we tend to look at them in the marketplace as one and the same, but they're very divorced because of the tool called interest on reserves. The Fed can peg the interest rate, its policy rate, independent of the size of the balance sheet. And if the marketplaces will get wrapped around the axle about the balance sheet, let's just fix it because it has no bearing whatsoever on their ability operationally to peg the Fed funds rate, Steve? which is going to be hey a guys. flat line for Steve, as far you as want to jump in? See. Yeah, I want to say what's happened here is that things have kind of been brought into uh, congruence here. The Fed went to patience in January and didn't really change its outlook very much. It was very important for the Federal Reserve to have its outlook uh, for the economy match its rate structure or the idea of the change in policy. I'd say Rebecca is kind of right. The way I'd put it is I think the Fed went, uh, you know, full metal dovish here is the way I might, I might put it. Uh, but it needed to happen. They had to bring down the GDP number. They brought up the unemployment number, which, by the way, they've been downgrading that unemployment forecast for a very long time. First time it's come up in a little while, I would imagine. But the idea was that we were way out of balance with a Fed on pa a patient policy, but a very rosy economic outlook. Now the outlook has come down. It's a little, it's a little more uh, modest in terms of the outlook for growth, much closer to potential, and that matches the rate policy much closer now, but along with, to, to, to just add to what Paul was saying, along with the balance sheet policy.